Bill Wiggs here from the Sunfield and Greenwood United Methodist Churches in Southern Illinois with a devotional for July 6th, 2020. Sorry this is so late today, everyone. Uh, having a few difficulties with the program that I use to record. So instead of a recorded devotion today, we're going live. And we're starting this week a study of the first epistle of John. Now, I, when I say it's an epistle, you know, and it's considered a letter normally, but really it has more of the structure of a sermon. And so I think this really is more of a written out sermon or a religious tract, perhaps, that was given to the various churches. And so they would receive this. It was circulated among the churches that the Apostle John was kind of the, the bishop for, or the overseer for. Now, automatically when I say the Apostle John was the bishop of those churches and this letter was from him, you understand where I come from on the authorship of it. There are some uh, who believe that this was written by anybody else but the Apostle John. It's pretty popular among uh, many religious scholars, especially those of a, a more uh, liberal mindset, to say that pretty much every book in the Bible was written by someone other than we think that they were. But here's why I think it was written by John, the beloved apostle. First of all, the structure of it, the sentence structure, the themes are very much like the Gospel of John. The early church believed this to be letters from who else but the Apostle John, the brother of James, son of Zebedee, you know? And because of that, this particular work and the Gospels create a, a set of literature that comes from this man who was so close to Jesus. He was with Jesus all the time. He was one of the, the three that were with him pretty much all the time. And we know that he sat next to him right there at the Last Supper, hearing every word. We know that he was at the temple courts when Jesus was on trial. We know that he went to the crucifixion, and he was there with Jesus' mother, Mary. And we know that Jesus himself gave John the care of his mother, knowing that John was going to live to a ripe old age. He's the only one of the apostles who was not martyred for his faith, although he had some pretty close calls and even spent some time on the island of Patmos. But we see that he pretty much lived the majority of his later life in Ephesus. And while he was in Ephesus, he did a lot of the writing that we have from him. Now, following that line that this is indeed written by John, we know that this was most likely written between 75 and 100 AD. And it was already known in that later part of that, of that time frame and written about that these letters existed. Now, some scholars believe that this particular letter may have even come before 70 AD. So that's about the time frame we have here. But what's important to me is not even who wrote it or when it was written or where it was written, but the content of it. And that's what I want to share with you tonight and throughout the rest of this week and hopefully the rest of my recordings work. And so we're reading tonight from that first chapter, 1 John 1, 1 through 3, we're going to read here. It says this, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. 1 John 1, 1 to 3, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. All right, so as you see this beginning, it's really interesting. It says, that which was from the beginning. Well, when's the beginning here? 
Well, this is eternity past. Jesus, the pre-existing Son of God, is who he's talking about here. The fact that Jesus has always existed, that he is eternally the second person of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is the eternal Son. He was in the beginning. Before things came into being, Jesus was. Now we also see this then in John's Gospel. It says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And then in verse 14 it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus existed before time and space. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning, God was. And that God who was in the beginning became flesh and dwelt among us. Let me share another scripture with you. Genesis 1, starting in verse 1, says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, and God said. See that? In the beginning, here we have, before the heavens and earth were formed, God was there. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, and then God said. The Bible tells us that not one thing was made without Jesus. Jesus is the agent of creation. He is before all things, and he will be after all things pass away. It was through him that all things were made, and in him all things have their being and continue, continue to be held together. But there was a moment in time, the Apostle Paul says, in the fullness of time, God sent his son. There, there was a moment in time when God sent his son into this world in the babe of Bethlehem, Jesus, son of Mary, born of the virgin, so that he could be like us. This is the mystery of the incarnation, that God was both man and God at the same time. Jesus is fully God and fully man. He has all the power of God. He has all the frailties of humanity. But although he was like us in every way possible, there was one thing that he was not like us, and that is that Jesus did not sin. John says, we have seen him, we have heard him, we have experienced his presence. John walked with him, John ate meals with him. When Jesus slept, John slept. When they were out on the boat together, they were out there on the sea. He saw the miracles. He saw him confront the Pharisees and religious leaders. He saw him heal those who were sick. He was there when the blind received their sight, when the deaf began to hear again, when the lame began to walk. He saw the resurrection, the, the new life coming into Lazarus. He saw that when Jesus raised people from the dead. He saw the glory of God in Jesus Christ, and he is a witness of those things. Jesus is God made flesh, and God did it because of his love. He came into this world as the person of Jesus Christ, and because of that, we can have salvation. John says, we have looked upon him, and our hands have handled him, this word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. We have eternal life through Jesus Christ. The God who 
first breathed life into humanity and we became living beings is the same God found in the person of Jesus Christ. And he is the same God that if we believe upon his name, that will indeed give us salvation. He'll forgive our sins if we confess our sins. And because of that, because he is the life, we too have eternal life in him. That's the good news. That's the gospel that we have. And it is the glory that has been revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. Throughout this week, we're going to be looking at chapter 1 of 1 John. And we're going to be seeing this wonderful witness that John has concerning the word of life. And we're going to see what it is that God intends for us as believers in Jesus Christ as we go through this wonderful sermon of the Apostle John, this aged saint who has believed and given us all for Jesus is bringing us this message. And through the Holy Spirit, I pray that you will be touched and that it will strengthen you in your faith as you look at what it means to truly live for Jesus in the beauty of holiness as written down in these words from 1 John. I hope that this new study is a blessing to you and that together we learn and grow. If you have any questions concerning 1 John or about anything that I say in any of the devotions, please feel free to comment below or to send me a, a, a personal message about it. I'd be glad to try to answer any of those questions. If, there, if it's appropriate, I'll try to answer it during these devotional videos that we're going to be uh, producing over the next uh, couple of weeks. If it's something more personal, I can answer that in private. But I pray that you are truly blessed by this and that we will see that same glory that John has seen as Jesus comes to us in his spirit and helps us to grow into the likeness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your word and Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you did come into this world, that you are eternal God, that you have existed before time and space existed, and that through you all things are created. Through you we have life. Through you we have salvation. Through you we have eternal life, and we are truly thankful. Lord God, we lift up to you all those who are struggling today, for those who are depressed, for those who are anxious, for those who are struggling in any way, Lord. Will you show yourself to them tonight? Help them to experience the joy of their salvation anew. Lord, for those who are sick, we want that healing power that comes from you. And so, Lord, pour out your healing power. For those who work to keep us safe every day, we ask, Lord, that you would protect them and keep them safe in the midst of all that's going on with this pandemic and with the general unrest in our society today. Lord, we trust that you can bring healing to this land. For Lord, you have brought us life in your name, and may that life reach out to the world to your glory. For we pray it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and may he give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, until tomorrow, my brothers and sisters, I hope you have a wonderful night and that you are experiencing the joy of the Lord. God is faithful. Forever God is strong.